The first photo shoot today is taking place at the SIU Arena in Carbondale, Illinois. I'm getting my stuff packed up and ready to go right now. I want to be able to get there early to be able to capture and record the presenter that's going to be going over the Farmer's Almanac. I want to be able to get there early so I can not only capture some of the events taking place at the arena, but I also want to be able to check out some of the Saluki Stadium where the university will be hosting a viewing event for the solar eclipse in totality. Southern Illinois is a thriving agricultural community, so one of the presenters inside the arena is going to be going over the Farmer's Almanac. After packing my stuff up and getting over to the arena, I want to get some footage there, inside and outside. In addition to going to the arena in Carbondale, I also plan on having my stuff ready to film and capture the totality moments in Macanda. Specifically in Macanda, it's going to be about 5 to 10 miles south of Carbondale. With the amount of additional traffic and people in the area today, it'll be difficult to grab all the shots that I plan to get. So I want to head over to the arena first see what's going on outside and inside, then head over to Macanda and try to grab the moments of totality right at 120 to 122. Visitors from all over the world gather in Carbondale, Illinois to experience totality. People from the Bay Area and beyond join together to be able to see and know more about the solar eclipse. Inside, Catherine Bokeman is gearing up for her presentation. She is one of the digital editors for the Farmer's Almanac. She shares a poem and some insight on the 2018 edition. More trivia, more astronomical events. Um, and the weather forecast here is in verse. Um, we call it doggerel. And the same fellow has been writing it for several decades. Actually, I think I'll just read it. It's hard to judge the sweeter sight, a lightning bolt, or a Perseus meteorite. Come in from the fairways while Zeus and Thor contest the airways. Cooling trend at summer's end. We obviously have the, um, the long range forecast in the book as well. Uh, but this is just a kind of a more poetic expression. And on the um, far right, on the farmer's calendar, we still have that. It's just the essays are more reflections of the season um, and provide insights on life. I like to think of the almanac really as a full cycle uh, of the seasons. You know, you're starting with the sun and the moon, and then you have the weather. Move into the land and planting and growing. Move into the harvest and cooking, home remedies, and, and, so, and so forth. Catherine's presentation connected the solar eclipse with agriculture. It was interesting going over the 2018 edition of the Farmer's Almanac. Outside of the arena, guests and data scientists gather together to be able to discuss and prepare for the solar eclipse. Chris Olson, a vintage photographer, shared with me insight on how he recorded and captured the 2017 solar eclipse from Carbondale, Illinois. In addition, Carbondale also will be hosting the 2024 solar eclipse. My name is Chris Olson. I'm from Aurora, Illinois. I do 19th century photography, and I branched out to do 19th century um, astronomy and astrophotography as well. Uh, this is a prototype of my replica of the Q photoheliograph, which was the first dedicated instrument for taking photographs of the sun. Uh, this is the full size replica, and it was conceived in the mid 1850s by John Herschel and it was completed after Herschel's death in the uh, late 1850s. It took daily photographs of the sun and in 1860 it was packed up and hauled from England to um, Vel Veliosa, Spain uh, for the 1860 eclipse. Uh, it was there that this instrument helped prove that the solar corona was um, an artifact of the sun and not uh, any kind of lunar atmosphere or diffraction around the moon or even an artifact of our own atmosphere. From there it was taken back and until the 1870s we were taking daily photographs of the sun. After speaking with Chris, I made my way back to my vehicle and could feel the traffic starting to move in. It was my goal to be able to get from Carbondale to Macanda in 45 minutes and the drive was not going to be easy. When driving south of Carbondale, travelers can take a couple of different routes to reach Macanda. I went with Giant City State Park to be able to avoid traffic. When arriving in downtown Macanda, I noticed that there was a lot of traffic. Roadways and parking lots were full. I moved to a back area to be able to park my car. I arrived in downtown Macanda around 11.45.
the solar eclipse would start around 1152. This would be the point where the sun and the moon would just start to align. It would only be the corner of 1152. I realized though I needed to get my equipment set up to be able to capture the total eclipse. The point of totality was the moments that I wanted to capture in still photography. I wanted to be able to capture video footage of other moments as well. In connection with local agriculture, I also wanted to share local music from Southern Illinois from Jenny Johnson with the song, Solar Eclipse. After parking, I set up my tripod and camera behind the boardwalk with a group of friends. It was lucky that one of my friends brought a piece of welding glass to be able to help me focus my shots. I had brought a solar filter that was made from cardboard, and the welding glass was much easier to be able to get my camera to get in focus. You can see in this first steel shot that the sun is out of focus. I started to sweat as my shots were not coming out right and totality was getting even closer. At 12.50, I was finally able to obtain photos that were in focus. Totality was at 120, so I started to be able to line my camera to be able to grab the best shot possible. Right after the eclipse, I went to edit and upload photos to the Eclipse Mega Movie that I was working on with Google and a couple other universities. Southern Illinois provides a wide variety of produce of agriculture, from livestock to apples to wine. I decided to take a little trip outside of McCandon to Cobden, Illinois. I stopped by Owl Creek Vineyard for a glass of Samberson wine. The local wine continues to improve year after year. Owl Creek Vineyard is located in Cobden, and it's just a little bit outside of Macanda. It's one of the first wineries in Southern Illinois Wine Trail. It added an additional layer of agriculture to the solar eclipse. I wanted to be able to show this area along with Carbondale and Macanda. Touring through downtown Carbondale, I stopped by Washington Street to check out the flyover community garden. This is a beautiful opportunity for residents to come and engage with 
learn, and develop their agricultural skills. They're also giving back to the community, and it's a beautiful way for people to connect. The Flyover Community Garden hosts a variety of plants, from kale to carrots to sunflowers. Also on Washington Street, they have WDBX Community Radio. One of my close friends was hosting a show under the pawpaw tree, so I decided to stop by the radio station and share with him the 2018 Farmer's Almanac. He had mentioned that he had the 2017 edition, so I wanted to show him the 2018 edition and go over it with him. We went over different weather patterns and how different moon phases affect different parts of the year. After going over some of the Farmer's Almanac, I also talked with him about the day and the solar eclipse. I let him know that it was my first time recording and photographing a solar eclipse. It was very refreshing and fulfilling to know that I had grabbed the moments of totality on film. After talking with him for a bit, I went back home to work on more photo and video editing. It was a comforting and fulfilling day for the solar eclipse.